Hey everybody, it's Ryan here from Android Call. So I'm here to do my review on the Hasselblad True Zoom mod. Um, like I gotta say, I saved this one for the last just because of the fact that, I mean, this was gonna be my favorite. I really, of all of them, that was the coolest, most innovative idea that you could put together for a phone. Uh, remember those uh, Q series? It was the Q10 or whatever it was, lenses you can get for the Sonys. I thought this was gonna be that, but way better. So I really want to take my time, play around with it, and assess what I really liked about it before I did the review. Um, it also comes with this handy-dandy little case um, to hold the, the zoom lens in. Because, yeah, you don't want this just bouncing around in the in your your, your case. I leave it in my, my messenger bag all day long. Uh, kind of a neat little thing that the magnets usually work. Well, usually do, just slightly still through. Um, it still uses a magnet to hold the flap down, which is kind of cool. Just a little nice uh, add addition versus the other bags that you get with these things. Um, getting the camera out of them can be a little tricky, so always make sure that you put the grip in there last so that you can pull it out a little bit easier. Otherwise, it's I did it once the other way, and it's really hard to get out. Uh, outside, the, the little baggy thingy flicks down to just a small size. Uh, and there we go. So as you see, it has that little... Um, soft parts to rush their game you know brush against the the lens so that it doesn't hurt that lens um you'll notice there's no battery meter on it because this doesn't have a battery this is one of the only ones that doesn't really have a battery it uses your your phone battery which is good i mean what, what do you really need a battery in this for so simply put it together and you'll see that it's connected We'll be able to go into Moto Mod. There's no real options here, which again I was expecting there may be at least some options you can play around with, but no, there's nothing you can really do. It's really there just in case you know it needs to have any new firmware. And I and actually I didn't mind walking around carrying just this. I did this for a few days, just carrying just that. It gets a little pretty bulky carrying it around, but I mean. To see people's face when you go like, oh, yeah, I got my phone out and just start talking, you know, and take a picture. I loved it. Uh, and then I had a few people actually notice the Hasselblad name, which is really, really good. Uh, getting it off is pretty easy. Just got to use that little lip there. And there you go. They really warn you to make sure that it's off before you take it off. Otherwise, you could could damage it. Now, to actually use it, you could just do, like, anything to bring up any camera app, whether it's in Facebook or Snapchat or text messaging, whenever you want to take a photo, uh, it'll use the same app. So you can just go go to Twist and it brings that out. You can also use that power button, turn it on, and that'll bring you straight to the camera app as well. Um, you use you know the rocker for your zoom, zoom back out, and the flash. I'm just going to turn the flash on just so you can see how well it does. It's actually a pretty good flash. Um, real xenon bulb in there. Um, I have given it to a couple of my photography friends and they've really enjoyed it. They really liked they've noticed that difference. Um, before I get into the software of it, the one thing I think of the downside that they could have done way better on this about this is unfortunately I have a bunch of different like tripods and stuff I would like to use it for, but there's no way it would fit on any of these little gorilla pods. Um, there's no way it's going to fit on that tripod right here. Um, there's nothing for it to grab onto or hold it in place. So, because one of the things I've noticed a lot, and this can take really nice pictures, but you really need to be able to sit down, fiddle with it a little bit, and then to get that really nice shot. I mean, outside of that, it really wasn't that much difference that I noticed than my regular camera. So to get the most out of it, you're going to want to sit down and actually fiddle with it. I mean, just like you're going to take with regular cameras, you're going to want to fuss with it to make the most out of it. And to do that, it's nice to not have to hold it with both hands doing something. So it's nice to be able to plop it on a thing. So I, 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 my guess is I bet you you're going to see the next coming around of this some sort of version 2 or some sort of ex extra accessory that would hold it in place so you can put it down. And I think that would be a perfect accessory for it. So let's just go into the software of it. I'll just wake it up. So 
it does work in portrait mode or in landscape mode, which is nice because I was I thought they might lock us into one mode. Now, the only difference you see between this and regular camera mode is that it now has this Hasselblad button. Bring that up, and then you have the option to shoot in RAW or JPEG. Uh, we have some more modes like that. So just to give you uh, the separation here, let's go back and let's just show camera mode. So that is gone. The Hasselblad option is gone. Uh, and if I want to do those different kind of shot modes, there, there's not. They don't. I don't get the same options that I would have if I had the Hasselblad on. So let's put it back on. Mm -hmm. It's a little slow sometimes. So I'll bring it up. We have some of the modes you can play around with, black and white. We still have that, you know, play around with. Now, one thing that was, you don't get an option to sort of say what resolution do I want to shoot in or what uh, app, you know, um, aspect ratio. It just, uh, it just sticks you to that. Um, zoom works quite well. I'm not going to zoom that close or focus that close on something that close there. The optical balloon stabilization it actually is quite well. Like you can see, it's pretty fluid for trying to track and doing quite well. Uh, like I said, the few folks I've been able to show them, let them play with, who know what they're doing with it, we're like, wow, that's really nice. Um, you still get access to the manual mode, which you can as well, which I thought, I was hoping they would get a little better software for this, because again, trying to play around with, okay, well, what shutter speed do I want to use? And the, all those manual mode settings, they lock in that, uh, portrait mode, so I have to, you know, what am I looking to do? You know, so, uh, and some of this you want to and play around with all of them, right? So, so I, I just think they, they could have done a little better job playing that software. Maybe it's just kind of, I got too used to using um, the G5 and its manual mode in terms of uh, what you can actually play around with. So I was really hoping to do a little more. Um, I think, you know, just to take a picture. Oh, I'm going to delete that because I don't really care for the flash. Um, does a you know, pretty good job. Take a video. Just hold it down. Oh, we can't do video. Oh, well, video's up there. Right, sorry, my bad. Uh, let's get rid of that. Delete all two photos. Delete. Delete. Delete that. So, yeah. Uh, so if I want to take a video, sorry, I uh, just go to video mode and then same thing. And again, it has the stabilization thingy on or off. It's a little slower on the tracking when you do that. Um, but that's because it's trying to do the image stabilization. So, I don't know if we can see the lens bounce around a bit. I don't know if we can make that out, but anyways. What else are we going to do with it? Really, that's pretty much it. Um, Software-wise, it's pretty straightforward. I, I kind of liked it. I didn't really notice that much more of a, uh, oops, turn that off, a, a battery drain on having it, taking photos. Just notice it's bulkier. That's all I've really noticed about it. Um, so... I liked it. What I didn't like was the photo quality wasn't that much different. Um, yes, if you took the time and you really, really played with it, you could get some awesome photos. And, and my friend really took some really neat photos playing around with it. I'd love to show them to you, but again, they're his photos and the photos of some people, so I don't think it's right to share those without their permission. Um, but... Uh, Again, you got to sit down and like he did, he, he sat down and he fussed with it. And he, you know, played with the settings and he, you know, played with angles. And again, you really need to sit down and do that. So unless you're wanting to do that, unless you're that kind of photographer, you're not going to notice much difference between this and this. So like this is what $350. 
So maybe it's just you want the zoom, but that's pretty expensive just for zoom. So if you really want that extra feature, you want the better camera, you're going to sit down and have to work with it, just like any other camera. Uh, but if you're just going to point and shoot, you're not going to notice a difference. Okay, so that's the my review on it. I'll have a full write-up on the website in the next little bit. So if you have any questions about it, uh, please let me know. I'd love to answer them. Um, this has been a real treat to play with these things. I mean, this has been awesome. Uh, I can't wait to share the full review of the phone uh, in the next little bit. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a good day.